What's up guys, Axis here with day four of modeling week and today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on how to make the pillars inside my Dare Rising intro. This is one of my favorite intros I've ever done. Uh, just because, you know, I took my modeling to another level on this. Uh, I've never really kind of had that leap in progression uh, before uh, with modeling. So, um, yeah, basically you see it in this shot here. Uh, well, basically the entire intro, you can see it, but it's just this pillar. Um, obviously these little uh, bits on the edge um, are octane. Uh, I used a dirt material or a dirt shader and a mixed material uh, and had a completely reflective um, metal material as the, the kind of mix. Uh, and it came out really nicely, so yeah. Obviously, if you guys don't have Octane, you can't do something like this. But if you do, then uh, you can follow along and do exactly the same thing. So I'm just going to keep this as a reference. Uh, so I'm kind of creating the same angles and everything. Because um, this thing took quite a while to um, come up with the uh, the structure, I guess. Um, so yeah. Let's just get into it. Just open up Cinema 4D. Obviously, I'm not very prepared. Uh, okay, so now that we've got that, we're going to get our spline. Uh, for this, I'm going to be using a. Uh, I'll just go with linear, and we'll we'll add the uh, the edges afterwards. So here, here, um, and then I'm just going to try and uh, do it as well as I can first off, um, because then it'll be a lot easier after to uh, fix anything up. So there we go, up here. Maybe not quite along, quite as far along as that. And then I'm going to click over here and you can just reposition these on the uh, different axes. I'm using the front view uh, so we don't have any issues with uh, the splines being all over the place. So yeah, this should be fine. And then if you click close spline you should see this uh, closing obviously. Um, and that was pretty close. So there we go. We've got that and now we can just align these so uh, obviously since we're supposed to be aligning this on the Y We're going to copy the Y Put it here And it should be aligned. I'm going to drag this along a bit Maybe drag this up And then this bottom part we're going to have to align as well. I'll align it to this part. So obviously Y again copy uh, Just control C control V or command C command V and then we also have this one which is going to be aligned on X, so copy this, oh. copy that, and I'm just going to select this with the uh, live selection up here, or 9 as the um, uh, the shortcut, uh, and that's roughly the object that we're going to be creating, uh, and then I'm going to put this inside an extrude nerves. As you can see, the object um, has some weird uh, smoothing done by the Fong tag, which we can fix by switching this down to 30 or even 0, but I don't like working with 0 because some of the edges uh, can look um, quite dodgy. Like if you, I'll give you an example. So if you have like a, a, a cylinder and we put this on uh, 30, it doesn't look that bad. There's You can't see the edges um, on the object, but if you put it to 0, you can see all the different polygons that this is made up of and all the segments so you have to turn this up to actually make this look good and even then you can still see all the segments until it's up really high so yeah if you i'd really recommend using 30 uh, or above um because it smooths it out but not to the point where it looks um like you're losing detail of the model so yeah that's that's that part there and uh that's not centered obviously, so I'm going to try and center this by eye, which is probably not going to go very well. But I'll try my best. Also, I want to make this slightly bigger. So there we go, that's my um, amazing centering by eye. Uh, obviously, I'm, I'm doing this with the enable access tool. I'm sorry if I'm not mentioning this, it's just enable by clicking L uh, and deselect it uh, if you want to move this around properly. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to Technically, if I centered this properly, it should go right to the center if I zero all these out. Which, obviously, it's not going to be completely centered, but it's going to be relatively close, which is what we're going for. So now, uh, we can have the middle part, which we're going to do a linear 
um, spline again for. So this is just going to go up through here. Um, and then drag this down a bit. I'm going to go up in this direction. And up again, but kind of um, slightly more up on the Y instead of the X. Uh, and then back down to around this point here, which we we'll, we'll can easily match up after we've finished this, but this is just a rough draft. I feel like it's a lot easier just to do a rough draft first and then uh, put all the coordinates in after. So yeah, there we go. This isn't perfect, but it's pretty close to the original. And then we're going to obviously close spline so we can put this in the extra nerves. And then uh, up here, there's some chamfering. So uh, chamfering, probably the best tool in the spline arsenal that you've got here. Uh, you just right click, make sure points mode selected so you can select the points you want. And as you can see, you can create lovely, perfectly round edges without having to use the uh, the annoying uh, Bezier tool. Uh, so again, I'm going to do this but on a slightly bigger scale on the chamfer. So we can uh, move this slightly so it knows, um, knows that we're wanting to use those points. And then we can drag them out even further. And then again, uh, we are going to center these uh, or make these points kind of central to the whole object. So I'm going to match these ones because it'll be a lot less of uh, a lot less hassle to do these points rather than having to change one and then uh, you know adjust everything else. So I've obviously made it all the same Y point over here. So as we as we've got that, we can even do the bottom if you want it to be perfect. Uh, that's probably it. I'm gonna say, uh, and everything else is centered um, relative to the object, obviously. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move this back, put this in an extrude, and drag it out. So it's gonna rotate around, see that? That looks pretty accurate. Um, also, what I did was I put a uh, a hole into this object which is going to require a, uh, a a bool a boolean object so I'm going to hold alt on here you can also use the knife tool but um, by just selecting this polygon after making this editable which would be a lot cleaner way of doing it but um, I think that's the way I might have been the way I did it in the original but I don't remember and then we're going to try and roughly get this correct on the rotation so as you can see, we're just going to go into the front view because it's a lot easier to reference something. And then I'm going to increase the Y. Obviously, the uh, radius is a bit too big on this, so we're going to have to go down. And then we can adjust this later. And then I'm going to try and make this around the same uh, extrusion uh, level as the other object, but not quite the same. As you can see, that um, that rotation is pretty accurate as well. So, yep. Uh, I'm going to put this up. Make sure if, if this is not facing the right way, so you can't move it up and down uh, relative to the rotation, you click W or uh, up here, which is the shortcut for the coordinate system, which will change it relative to the uh, grid lines or relative to your actual rotation of the object, which is what we want in this case. So... There we go. That's basically it for that. And then what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to duplicate this, put it inside the bool. Uh, wrong way around. And then we're going to increase the radius. So as you can see, this is going to create a big extrusion. For some reason, I've managed to screw up the uh, um, the relative scale of this. So I'm just going to increase the... Um, the extrusion of the uh, the middle object here, which will allow us to um, to have that not bit not be cut off, which is what we want. So now we've got the pillar. This might be a bit too high. I'm not gonna lie. So down a bit. Got to learn these shortcuts, guys. If I'm not mentioning them, uh, just look around, see what's changing, because I'm doing E and T 
and R sometimes for the, uh, all these different uh, three tools up here and even four when I'm using point selection for the live selection and the rectangle selection. So yeah, sorry if I'm not mentioning these things, just comment if you have any problems with what I'm doing here and I'll try and get back to you. Um, okay, and now we have this big shroud that goes over it uh, around here. I like this bit. Uh, and then we're going to go into front view so we can uh, see this head on. And I'm going to use the linear spline tool, do a rough draft. Don't know what the best way to start this off is, but I'm going to start going from the middle out here. Uh, and then we're going to go up further to the top. Hmm. I'll probably extend this slightly, but I don't want to click E because then I'll ruin the spline to uh, make it take it slightly higher. In fact, I could just do this until it's matching, like so. So obviously this isn't going to be perfect, but um, it's pretty close. In fact, it might be perfect. You never know. Um, and I'm going to click over here. And then down here. And then readjust these accordingly. And just right across here. It kind of sucks that I managed to screw this up so much. Uh, so up here slightly. And then we're going to go across on the... Oh no. Damn it. That's what I didn't want to do. Right. So. Going to have to restart this. If you click any of the other points it ends your spline and it's really irritating. If you guys have any tips for this, if you know how to fix this, then please comment them because it's a bane of my existence. Uh, right, so up here and then across. Doing this slightly quicker. Like down there. And just to screw this up royally. Um, and then close spline and then try and match the uh, diagonal. There we go. And now what we can do is we can click E without uh, destroying our spline and drag this bit out and also match these on the Y. Also I want to make sure that this is out slightly further to match the other side. Could be symmetrical here. So that's pretty much what I'm going for. Um, yeah, I think that's it. And then we can put this in an extrude. Uh, so I'm going to go into the top view just to uh, reposition this slightly. And it's going to be, I'm going to drag it back on the Z, just slightly outside the object. Increase the, uh, the depth until it reaches the other side. And that looks about right. Now that we've got this, uh, what we can do is we can add bevels because um, it'll look alright if we do it in a fillet uh, cap. So I'm going to go about 3, I reckon. So you should look good because uh, with this, as you can see in the final, we have these little dirt uh, mix shaders uh, that I did in Octane, which really stand out if you have a, a bevel on it. So that's what I did for that. Uh, and then the only problem with doing this inside a fillet uh, and extrude nerves is that this uh, some parts aren't actually um, beveled, which kind of sucks. Um, I did I did do this when I was making it, so uh, if you guys want to do it properly, I'll show you the proper way to do it. But for something like a cube, all you have to do is put the uh, fong angle down to thirty C, and then we gonna we're gonna get the edges here. So go to select loop selection, and we can select all the different sides of the, oh, uh, yep, yeah, okay, all different sides, and don't think the bottom's needed, but basically what I do is I go into here, right click, bevel, and keep the subdivisions on zero, and then we can bevel this to our heart's content. So that looks really nice now. Uh, 
basically what you do is you bevel all the different parts of this uh, and then I'm also going to create a little light bit at the bottom which is pretty simple. Again I created a rough draft but this time I used a, I used a subdivision surface which is an interesting uh, little uh, thing you can do. I'll show you in a second. Uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create it so that it's starting just before here. And then I'm going to select both these points, drag them back a bit, put them in a symmetry object so it uh, duplicates the other side and I'm going to make it editable by clicking C, right clicking, go to select children, click C once again, right click and connect objects and delete. Now if I select both these points, right click and go to join segment, we can see that this middle part is now joined and to finish it off we close the spline. And now we're going to put this in extrude nerves. Uh, and drag this out on the top. Oops. Didn't actually put it in the extrude. Make sure you're holding Alt. So I'm going to drag this back. Sorry if it's a bit cluttered and you can't really see. Put this on uh, uh, the second mode here. Uh, and then I'm going to go into the active view. God damn, I duplicated it. And I'm just going to rotate around this so I can see it a bit better. Uh, you don't really need to mo uh, bother about the bottom that much because of the fact that this is going to be in the ground. So um, if you want it to be perfect, then just move this up obviously, but I'm not really going to bother about making everything all perfect. Um, and there's a couple more elements you can add here, like you can extrude some bits of this. I might just extrude this one bit just to show you how to do this. Uh, I'm going to click C, go to select children, right click. Uh, uh, and then press C after you've selected children, right click uh, and then connect objects and delete and then we can go into here and then I'm going to scale this down according to where I want it to be and then I'm going to bring this out I'm going to uh, bevel this obviously I need to change the font tag and there we have a little perfect bevel and here at the bottom I did some knife cuts, so if I just do the same process, right click, select children, uh, see uh, connect objects and delete, and what I can do is I can go and click M and then K right after each other, uh, and what I can do is I can go and get a loop. Uh, you can do this perfectly by uh, uh, making sure you select the offsets and everything, but uh, I'm just going to do this by uh, hand. So if I click E, then I can go and do this um, and then I can just bring this in slightly and extrude it like so and I'd also bevel the edges. I also beveled the edges of all parts of this using the same technique by putting the subdivisions on zero. Uh, and back to the light object that we have here. I'm going to put this on the subdivision surface. It might not look good at the start because we haven't added cuts but what we have to do is do the same process of clicking C, right clicking, select children, C again, right click and connect objects and delete. Now if we do MK to bring up the knife, what we can do is we can uh, click shift and go to 95 on the offset while we're on the loop mode. And as you can see, I am creating these points which are allowing the object to actually work. Uh, if I put this in a connect object, it might also help the case. Doesn't seem to be actually. Never mind about that. Uh, and then I'm going to go back to the knife tool and then I'm going to maybe go... It doesn't really matter where I click it. I'm going to see what I managed to screw up on. So I'm going to right click select children because I've managed to uh, go back too far. I'm going to click on the knife again. I'm going to go to plane this time because then it will select all kind of regions of this and then I'm going to go to object and then plane uh, and then also on the plane we're going to switch it to Y uh, and Z and then as you can see we're creating this object like this. I'm going to go do this both uh, sides and we've got this kind of rounded object here that looks quite nice. We may also add an object up here, a little cut up here and a cut on the opposite side as well. This would be better just to do the symmetry first 
Uh, I mean, after we've done this, but, um, you know, I didn't really think this through. So, uh, then in the middle, we're going to get the little light cut. So we'll go to YZ. Uh, wait, no, I mean XZ. And here and here should be fine. And then if I select the middle, and then just click T, hold command while I scale this down, and then scale it in a bit. In fact, wait a second. What I could do is I could scale it in slightly more, just so the extrusion looks all right. Double click on the bottom, create a material, and drag the material onto this little light bit. So then you can just replace the material in the end if you want to use it. Um, and then also we might want to add some more cuts just to make sure that this looks all right. Yeah, that looks pretty good. The light's a lot longer than it was in original, but um, you know, you guys can actually uh, do some knife cuts to make it shorter. So yeah, that's basically the knife part. Um, now that I think about it, that's pretty much everything apart from that grill. Now the grill was interesting because I think I just used um, some rectangles and then I, I edited them slightly. So get a rectangle from the shape and then what we're going to do is we're going to click uh, the width down and the height. Let's do this until it's about this size. Z uh, I'm going to zoom in a bit and then I'm going to click C. Uh, these top points I'm going to select with the live selection, which is 0. Uh, I mean 9, sorry. And we're going to move it over slightly like this. Uh, what I need to do is actually make this match up to the, um, the degree that the, uh, the pillar is rotated. So if I move this up on the coordinates, you can see that this is pretty close. Just need to move it over slightly. And then uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all these points with Control A or Command A and chamfer, chamfer these points and then also I am going to uh, then create a spline mask scale this down, which I mean it's kind of stupid that I did this after but you know, what can you do? Now that I think about it, that was a really stupid idea because now I don't think I'm going to be able to actually do this uh, in fact, I could just bring these out. If you want to do this properly, uh, go back and actually uh, do the steps I'm mentioning here. Or reordering it so it's not as much of a hassle to get this to look proper. I'm also going to create a duplicate of this because we're going to need it for later. I'm going to group these as well with uh, selecting them and then clicking uh, uh, Control G or Alt G. I think that's the one. Yeah, that's it. So now that we've done that, we're going to bring this out over here. I'm going to put this inside an extrude while holding Alt. See a bit too extreme on the on this. I'm going to bring this uh, this one that we copied back a bit and then I'm going to put it in an extrude. Now uh, we can also add caps to the outer object which I'm going to do. One and one should look fine and I'm going to put the steps up to five each. And then from here I'm going to make the copy uh, editable with clicking C, right click, select children, C again, right click and connect objects and delete. And we have this one object here, which we can select with the uh, the polygon tool. I uh, click on the knife, and we're going to go to X. Oh, no, we're not. We're going to go to X Z, and we're going to turn up the cuts to about fifty to just see what we've got going on. This could work. And I'm just going to click there. You can also change the spacing. Knife tools are a really versatile tool. I really like it. And then we're going to right click, go to extrude inner, and uncheck. Uh, preserve groups while I do this and there we go we've got the little vents that we're wanting I'm going to drag these out and then I'm also going to bevel them making sure that the subdivisions are actually turned up this time 
for some reason I managed to select some wrong points here, but I guess I'm just going to have to deal with that. You guys could actually select the edges and make this look actually good, but um, I managed to screw it up. Anyway, um, now I'm going to move this back slightly in space on the Z. And then on the front view, I'm going to bring it up to its uh, position it was in the original. It's about here. So there we go. That's basically all you need to do for this, apart from some bevels I missed on the uh, main objects, um, which would have made the tutorial a lot longer. Uh, this is pretty much all I did for the pillars, and I, I just cloned them along the edges. So if you guys enjoyed this stuff, uh, don't forget to leave a like and comment. Uh, if you want any other tutorials, um, then I'll probably do them in a few weeks, because these are all pre-recorded. Because it's a lot easier to put out a week series if you pre-record. Um, so yeah, if you guys enjoyed this, remember to uh, sub as well, because you will not want to miss the rest of this series. Uh, because there's another um, couple of days left of this. Uh, and also you can check out the other videos. Uh, that will be in the cards in the top right. So I hope you guys enjoyed this and I'll see you guys in the next video.